So this is Mr. McLeod, and this is a second video in uh, how to do animation timers in JavaFX. And in this one, we're going to um, take what we had before with the private inner class, and we're going to try a different strategy uh, where we make a anonymous class. So you've already seen anonymous objects before. So an anonymous object is where you just create an object but you never store it in a variable. So, uh, for example, um, if I were to just say new color, and then I pass it all these parameters, I've created a new color, but I didn't store it in any variable. There's no variable of type color that is like the name of this color, and um, it means I can't ever access this object again. Uh, but that's okay, because I only needed to use it once, and I just wanted to pass it to the setFill method, and then I'm done with it. So that's called an anonymous object. Well, you can also do the same thing with classes. In this case right here, we only ever made one instance of my timer, and the only thing we ever did with it was we called start on it. Um, so in fact, we could actually make an anonymous object, new timer, and then just call start on it. Okay, so that would be another example of this is an anonymous object, and all I used it for was to call start, and then I never needed to access it again. Right, I would the disadvantage of this would be I wouldn't be able to call stop on it because I don't have a reference to it anymore. Um, okay, so I don't actually want it necessarily to be an anonymous object, but I do, uh, what I don't care is that it's called my timer. So with an anonymous object, um, sorry, with an anonymous class, uh, the, whole, the whole purpose of my timer was to extend animation timer. So I could have actually back here on this variable, I could have said this is just an animation timer. Um, equals a new my timer, and that would be fine because a my timer is uh, a subclass of animation timer, so it counts as an animation timer. Um, but then that just highlights the fact that I don't really care what this name is. Um, if I tried to just make an animation timer like that, then we have the problem that animation timer is abstract. Um, so if you looked in the uh, class definition here, uh, the API, it is an abstract class, which means you can't actually make an instance of it. Um, however, what I'd like to do is make a new instance of some class that is a subclass of animation timer. Um, and the way you do that is you put a curly, curly braces right after the constructor. And you're saying, I'm going to make a new instance of some class that extends animation timer, and here's the definition of the class. So then everything between these curly braces is the definition of the class. Um, so then what it's complaining about right now is that I haven't implemented the method. So I could say add unimplemented methods, and boom. Now I have an animation timer. Uh, that is a instance of some class that has no name. It's just some subclass of animation timer. And here's the implementation. It has this method and here's what it does every frame. Okay, in fact, I could actually take everything that I wrote right here. Okay, so everything in these curly braces. This is all the plate. This is the code that defines the class, right? I could literally take that and say, that's my definition, boom. Um, and then I would have an anonymous class that does the same thing as this private class. At that point, I could just get rid of this. Okay. And so if we were to uh, hit run now, this would behave the same way as the last demo, except now I don't have a separate class. I just, or I don't have a, named class. I don't have the my timer anymore. I'm using an anonymous class. Okay, so 
um, one of the other things that this does is um, while we could have instance variables um, and then we could access those instance variables inside the private inner class, um, we could also with a, an anonymous class because it's declared inside it exists inside the method then I could actually make this a local variable circle um, and then I could still call methods on that circle and I would have access to it right here so then I wouldn't even need the instance variable okay now there are some downsides uh, that you have to be aware of here or some pitfalls um, one thing I can't do is I can't change what the variable points to okay so if it's a local variable and I'm accessing it inside an uh, anonymous class um, I can't just say C uh, equals a new circle right? if I try to do that um, it's going to say that C needs to be either final or effectively final, meaning it never changes what it points to. Doesn't mean I can't change the properties of C, right? I can call methods on the circle and do whatever I want to it. I just can't make it point to a different circle. Okay, um, whereas if I were to make this a uh, instance variable like I had before, then that's no longer a problem because it's an instance variable. So I'm able to access it and and have both read and write access to it, change what it points to, and that's totally fine. Um, okay, so that's what anonymous classes are. And they're very useful if you want to uh, include the definition for like what happens in the timer or what happens in a mouse click uh, hand uh, event handler um, right in the same place where you're making it so that you don't have to make a whole bunch of private inner classes and then um, try to scroll around and find the one that defines the event handler that you're used. Um, so like I could say, uh, C dot on mouse click. Uh, oh wait, sorry. C dot set on mouse click. There we go. So if I call the C dot on mouse uh, set on mouse clicked method, um, this takes a event handler. Uh, mouse. So instead of defining a class down there, because um, I, I could have done the uh, private class mouse handler uh, implements uh, event handler event I could have done this um, and then I would have to let's see import that add the implemented method so I could have defined a class down here but then I would have to have a class for every single mouse handler right so like if I wanted um, different mouse events for different objects different responses which is pretty common um, I'd have it up with a lot of private inner classes and they would be way down here, away from the place where I was um, creating the uh, object that uses it. So instead, I can just get rid of all this. And I can say, I would like, uh, in this case, I'm actually going to use both an anonymous object and an anonymous class. So first, I create a new anonymous object. And that anonymous object will be an instance of some class that is a subclass of uh, event handler 
mouse event. Okay, and the implementation of that class will be the following in curly braces. I define the class and I add the unimplemented method and now I have the handle mouse event method and in here I can just write what this mouse event does, right? So the nice thing there is I can um, have the implementation be in the same place as the set on mouse clicked. I won't have to scroll around as much. Okay. Um, so I can say system.out.println I circle. Okay, so then if we were to run that um, and I click it and it says hi circle. Oops, open this up a little bit here. So hi circle every time I click it. Okay. So now you know how to use anonymous classes and uh, maybe you even learned a little bit more about anonymous objects. Um, enjoy your coding and I'll see you sometime later in another video.